Thank you, Mr. President. I know we're about to uh, bring some of the final votes on Keystone to the floor, but I wanted to take just a few minutes to speak on the topic that we will be focused on next week, and that is the impending crisis at the Department of Homeland Security should we not continue to fund their operations. This matters greatly to a state like Connecticut, uh, a state with an expansive coastline with natural disasters as part of our recent history uh, and with a close connection to some of the potential epicenters uh, for uh, terrorist activity and attacks, New York City being at the top of the list. It was just three years ago, Mr. President, the terrorists staged a horrific attack on downtown Paris. Before they were finally stopped by law enforcement, dozens of innocent people had been killed or injured in the world was given another reminder of the threats that exist all around us. Across Europe, countries stepped up their alert, increasing their law enforcement presence, raiding suspected terrorist cells, and requesting the assistance of the United States to help track down those people that carried out those attacks. Astoundingly, though, here at home, it seems like there are a lot of Republicans in Congress who would rather talk about deporting children who were brought to this country without documentation rather than talking about funding the very agency that every day seeks to keep our homeland safe from threats. Even as our allies in Europe look for ways to improve their security, the House of Representatives in particular has told us that the only way that we can fund the Department of Homeland Security keeping this country safe is to start deporting young boys and girls who are here trying to make it in the United States. Mr. President, the United States is no stranger to the types of attacks that happened in France. An Ohio man was arrested just three weeks ago when it was discovered that he was plotting to blow up the United States Capitol. I'm certain that we haven't already forgotten about the Boston Marathon bombing or Oklahoma City before that. The threats against this country continue to evolve. And so why should we play politics with the agency that is most responsible for responding and getting this country ready for those threats. It is the height of irresponsibility to suggest, as some of my colleagues have, that pushing the Department of Homeland Security, the department responsible for protecting the United States from terrorist attack, shutting that agency down, some people say, would be no big deal. This is what the Secretary of Homeland Security says. He said last week, quote, as long as we are on a continuing resolution, we cannot engage in new starts, new spending, new initiatives, new grants to state and local law enforcement to fund Homeland Security missions. We can't put into place the independent panel that recommended changes to the Secret Service. We can't do a lot of things for border security. Our counterterrorism efforts are limited. So in 28 days, the Department of Homeland Security, the agency charged with border security, aviation security, cybersecurity, presidential security, and counterterrorism efforts is going to run out of funding. But instead of working with the Senate, which overwhelmingly passed a bipartisan bill to fix our immigration system and secure our border, Republicans are willing to hold up this funding bill so that they can deport dreamers against the president's executive order. This isn't just irresponsible, it's dangerous. Now, in my state, as I said, it matters greatly. We have seen over the past several years as the Northeast has been battered by hurricanes and superstorms and blizzards, the indispensable nature of agencies funded in the Department of Homeland Security budget. Failing to pass this bill would delay upgrades to critical and necessary emergency communication systems for first responders in my state that are responding to emergencies and disasters. And whether we like it or not, they are happening with greater frequency. Now, fortunately, thanks to the leadership of Senator Mikulski and Senator Shaheen, there is a path forward. Yesterday, they introduced a clean full year funding bill that's been endorsed by every Democratic senator. This is the same bipartisan, bicameral bill that was negotiated by the House and the Senate last year. This agreement includes critical assistance, critical increases in funding for our border security, cyber security, air and maritime surveillance, and biological and explosive detection at our borders. All of these things keep us safe at a time when we know that terrorism is a more real threat than ever, not just to the United States, but to our partner countries all around the world. Mr. President, last week, the United States Senate passed unanimously 
a resolution that I was proud to have written, declaring that we stand in solidarity with the people of France, that we mourned the loss of innocent victims, and we condemned the atrocity of these attacks. I would submit that just as important as our words that we all came together to support is our deeds. Will our response now be to engage in a partisan fight over immigration, or do we come together as Republicans and Democrats to fund the law enforcement personnel who are charged with keeping our citizens safe? I strongly urge my Republican colleagues next week when we return to this body to quickly bring a clean, bipartisan Department of Homeland Security appropriations bill to the floor.